Hello and welcome to another episode of Fundy Tidings. I'm your host Jay Reamer and today with me I am joined by Karen Ludwig, our Member of Parliament from New Brunswick Southwest. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you very much. I'm so pleased to be here, Jay. Well, it's great to have you here. I've wanted to uh, have a chance to talk to you uh, for so long because you've got so much insight and so many things to share, and you're so open with uh, your constituents. It's just it's well, a I pleasure. Try. You do, and you succeed. Thank you. Um, w the the show today, I would like to be sort of based on what is the day in the life of a member of parliament, and um, you're a relatively new. Uh, newly minted a member, how how do you um, spend your day, and and what is involved um, in uh, in keeping track of the issues that are before you, keeping track of where your constituents stand on one issue and another, mm -hmm. and also how the difference is between. Uh, local issues and national issues because you're involved in everything and um, I know that the support that you lend to people uh, dealing with local issues is enormously important um, and a lot of it is your own enthusiasm and some of it is because of the role that you play so if right. we could sort of unravel that so that so that our viewers can have a better understanding of what an, a member of parliament does Hopefully, it will allow them to be able to um, to use you, so to speak, uh, more effectively. And if they have issues, uh, they can come to you in more effectively. And maybe consider running in politics themselves. Well, there you go. Yeah. So a day in the life, I mean, it's, it's a great question. One would depend on where I am in the country. So if I'm in the riding, that's a very different day than if I'm in Ottawa in terms of the task responsibilities. Um, a day in the life of the riding is probably of interest to, to people here. Uh, so about 50% of my time is spent in the riding. The other 50% is spent in Ottawa. So if you, as you can imagine, from a family perspective, I mean, there is, that is a day in life in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to juggle responsibilities and, you know, uh, connecting in different ways because of the distance and, and also the push-pull factor of, of when I'm in the riding as well. Um, so I have a great staff in the riding. And this summer I had a summer student that was absolutely awesome. So he's returned back to uh, UMB. I brought my, one of my Ottawa members, uh, Nora Robinson, who was local, who was with me in Ottawa. She came back for the summer because I also wanted her to get the feeling for the day in the life of both days, whether it's in Ottawa or in the riding, because it is one big picture. So whatever happens here, that's what we're actually representing in Ottawa, not so much the Ottawa voice here. Um, so we look at the week in advance, sometimes ideally, we look at months in advance. We know that there's certain events to attend or that we should attend. Uh, we work really, really hard on coordinating town halls. So we call them Let's Talk. Mm -hmm. And that's where I gather the most information about what's important to people in our communities. And as much as someone in Appahawk may say, I can't believe this riding, it's so huge. It, it literally is a geographic region of New Brunswick Southwest. I have nothing in common with the fishermen on Campobello. But it's like an onion. You peel the onion just a little bit, there's a lot of common denominators between everybody in this riding. You know, as, and even as we stand as a region, it's, you know, the, the concern about veterans, the concerns about seniors, um, students and, and repaying loans, uh, concerns about the environment, concerns about the pipeline, um, whether or not it will come in, uh, opportunities for growth, if we look at changes within the fisheries, uh, concerns about Lyme disease, mm -hmm. you know, across the variety, and also a real interest, and, and people want to see a greater promotion of tourism in our region. So each region is really very uh, unique in its characteristics. So uh, Southwest New Brunswick <clears throat> has its own personality, so to speak, and it has its own challenges too. And so I suppose the people within the riding share those challenges. You know, com in, 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 there's the commonality there, and yes. but they're they're different than say what constituents uh, in another part of the province might be facing mm -hmm. or certainly in another part of the country. And so your focus really is on what's going, what matters to people here. And 
So are you saying that even though the fishermen in one place might not uh, on the surface see a commonality, when you get right down to it, we all live in the same community. It's, it's all part of a larger community with many common it facets. It is. I mean, it's concerns about families. It's concerns about futures. Uh, it's concerns about uh, you know employment opportunities for people's children. Uh, that's very, very common. The other uh, area that we focus on or I focus on is working with the municipalities and the villages. And we live in a federal riding that has numerous communities. We're not a city. In fact, we border uh, Fredericton and St. John. So we are, you know, a lot of the urban sprawl is in our riding, uh, but they're working in different ridings. So there's, so there's that dynamic. And then looking at the small villages, this year was the 50th anniversary of the villages in terms of their establishment, most of them built around the train stations and the history that comes into place there. But in a larger center, even if we use Fredericton or St. John as the example, uh, the, the municipality typically has someone on staff that can gather the needs in the community, they can write the proposals, they have a source of engineers, uh, they can do it and they do it well. And in terms of our communities, we're small. You know, there's a lot of communities like McAdam that aren't, you know, they worked really hard to get their proposals out. It's, it's not that it doesn't cost anything to put an application forward, it's significant for a municipality. You know, some have said they spent up to twenty to thirty thousand dollars. That has to come out of their operating budgets mm -hmm. to put an application forward for funding. So as much as they identify the needs in their communities, they don't always have the resources to put their applications forward. Mm -hmm. So listening to that has become really important because uh, this past year with our government, uh, the infrastructure funding right now has been fifty percent, fifty percent federal and then cost shared 25-25 with the province and the municipality. So it has given them a bit of a break and a, an incentive to put those applications forward because they, have, they know what they need and we need to help them to fulfill the needs that they have. So a lot of it is listening and then working with the all levels of government working together. I, I know that um, you know over time and things that I've been involved with that oftentimes you have a group of people who are who need something and then on the other hand you have um, a pot of money or resources but the bridge is the trick and and there could be it's as though the right hand and the left hand don't even know that they exist so <clears throat> your one of the jobs that you have or one of your the jobs in your role is to is to is to be that bridge and by listening to what people have mm -hmm. to say is how that you know is facilitated the bridge sometimes jay is the application mm -hmm. so when when I'll hear about the issue and then I'll encourage them to put the application in and sometimes, sometimes I feel, I remember saying to, to Minister Sohi, I think some days I'm an economic development officer. Mm -hmm. um, but working with groups and helping them with the applications and then helping them make that, that next step, a lot of it is you know, trying to connect them with others in the communities or others in other communities. And that to me, um, I, I will say from a real personal level, I've often looked at politics in this area and I've, you, know, you see that you have one community uh, that is very good at writing applications. If you're good at writing applications, you know, the follow through is you typically get the attention with, with the funding. But looking at, at other communities that are not in, in the same position, there's a great opportunity to work collaboratively and, and partner on those. And that's an area that I really have been encouraging through my offices. Have you spoken with so and so? You know, they're really good at this, or they're also looking at a marketing strategy. Or you look at the example of the rural links. Uh, that, that's a tremendous opportunity and speaks so well and, and precisely to our rural area. Mm -hmm. But it also is a model for all other rural areas because we have communities that are now working together because they know one community can't carry it all. Mm -hmm. And so they have municipalities that are sharing with the gas tax funding right now. It is now set up so communities can actually share in that fund. So they could draw on a project, whether it's it could be um, you know it could be local local farming, uh, 
uh, a local education program, something small, but the communities could actually work together on that. And that to me is, is a vital part of sustaining and growing our rural communities. So I think, um, so what you're saying is, is that the inter connecting communities one to the other so that they don't each have to reinvent the wheel every time is, is, a, is a goal. Uh, and it, and it's and it's and it's Absolutely. a successful, it's a, a successful tactic. And I, I think that will it, you know over as, as we grow and we look at a vision for our for our region or especially for our, our large large federal riding, um, that is an ultimate goal, because if we think of tourism as an example, it's one thing to promote St. Andrews. It's a vast vast region. I look at the announcements recently on Campobello Island for the Walsh Pool Landing, that their focus is marine tourism. 80% of tourists to Campobello are American. They're not coming north. Uh -huh. So we have a tremendous opportunity to work as a region to promote tourism, to market it, to create opportunities. When I was uh, at a meeting last week, the Eastport Port Authority said, we have the services to support small um, cruise lines to come mm -hmm. into our port. We have no attractions. You have the attractions. You know, help us, help you and each other, because we see this as this is what the gentleman from the U.S. said. We see as this is one bay, one region. Yes. So to me, that that's a, just another example of we not only look at our Canadian communities or New Brunswick communities, we also have American communities that are our friends and neighbors, that are experiencing similar to what we are, and they see us. You know, prior to 2001 as you know an interconnected area that it was a free flow of, of transportation and people across borders well it is I think I think that uh, a lot of the challenges that that uh, communities face in in Washington County are very similar to the mm -hmm. challenges that are faced in Charlotte County and you know in this part of the the world and and working together has historically been um, you know I can I know I can't remember but I know back in the 20s mm -hmm. uh, there was a tremendously strong art community in the summer mm -hmm. because the Tides Institute in Eastport has put together an inventory of the cultural assets that have been in here for the whole century right it's very similar to to what you're talking about here as far as um, as far as promoting tourism today, it's just a different it's just a different flavor of ice cream, so to speak. It's it's um, it is working together. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can uh, help each other, and I think that that attitude is really important because I think that we need to move away from sort of the protectionist mm -hmm. thing and into and this is this is one of the things that I think you've been able to to do is to is to oh, because you. you spread yourself around so much you're everywhere mm -hmm. uh, you really do make appearances and you get an idea of what the community needs and then you share that with them and it gives us all strength and uh, I think that's really um, one of the things that uh, other um, members of Parliament uh, that's what their role is and I think a lot of people feel maybe not as connected as they as they do now with you. Well, I'm, pl I'm pleased to hear that. I'm also the chair of the New Brunswick Caucus, so I have a, a very good feel on the pulse for the other MPs in the province, and uh, truly, everybody's out there and active and, and connecting with their communities. I mean, it was a long campaign, and the message uh, top-down from the Prime Minister is, get into the communities. That is your role. Mm -hmm. Listen, never be arrogant, never be arrogant, be humble, and listen. You know, respond to the needs, work closely with the province, work doubly closely with the municipalities. The municipalities are the closest to the ground, listening to the needs. And a community member that's working, you know, on a, on a municipal board or, you know, on a village council, they are all volunteers. And, you know, they, they're the ones in the community at the church breakfasts and the firemen's breakfasts, uh, the volunteer firefighters. I've met with a number of them, they do it because they love it. Mm -hmm. You know, and wouldn't it be great if we all, you know, everyone thought in that vein, not everyone has that uh, that opportunity or that, um, you know, depending where, where they live. Uh, but the, the villages and the municipalities, uh, they are ground zero. Mm -hmm. Well, people, I think, really have a desire to be heard. They do. 
And if, they're, if they feel that they're being heard, they, um, they feel like they're living a much more f fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. And uh, elements of fear sort of dissipate, and their, their troubles become lighter. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a simply a matter of, being, um, of, of, of showing up, listening to them, and uh, really shaking their hands and saying, I hear you. And that, I think, is, is something and that... And thank you. And thank you. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And thank you for even coming out and making the effort to let me know what's on your mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Because if we don't have strong... Because we do, as you say, we live in sp small communities. And those communities form the province. Then there's hundreds of them, right? And if they can work together, then the province, the character of the province can, uh, can change. Mm -hmm. And I think that as we, as a province, have kind of been uh, in the category of the have not or the mm -hmm. wanting province, by banding together, we can, uh, banding together, we, we, can, we can bolster ourselves. And so you really are the glue so to speak, that or the connectivity that, that helps us do that. Well, I would say I'm one of the dots of glue. There are many dots to that glue. Um, one of the things I was going to mention on that in terms of um, looking at the vision is that the four Atlantic provinces are also working together. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. The local stories have to come out. <clears throat> because not only the issues, but also the opportunities and the successes. Mm -hmm. And I, I do commend you, Jay, and your, on your station here at CHHJ. No, it's not CHCO. 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 So I was at CHJ yeah, yesterday. Yes, that's all right. Um, on the work that you do here, because the stories are local, and all politics are truly local. And the more that people can hear about what's happening in their backyard, the more they become aware. I, I think social media is great. I use it a lot every day, you know, where I'm posting, you know, where I've been or what's happening or what's, you know, something that's coming down from Ottawa. But truly, uh, those are little blips. They're not comprehensive. Um, they're not uh, 30 minutes of an, you know, an open question opportunity such as this so in the community. It's local programming. Uh, that is so important. I can remember when I was young, Gino Retta uh, from uh, Sports Desk. Well, Gino started on uh, Channel 10 cable. And we would watch him. We'd all go in. We'd sit in a room no larger than this. We'd watch Gino. And look where he is today. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's ever forgotten his roots of growing up in a small community and the significance of cable television and the work that you're doing here. Well, I appreciate that because we do work hard at trying to inform people of of what's going on locally and mm -hmm. you know one of the challenges that that we have is is that is that we are um, we live in such a remote um, area that the closest city St. John um, you know what's going on in St. John is important but it's not as important to us as what's going on here Absolutely. and this is the only venue or one of the few venues that or platforms that we have to to share what's going on mm -hmm. here and to and to allow people to come in and express their points of view on, on different things. And uh, I, I think that mm -hmm. social media is important and this kind of media uh, where people um, have public access to it is, is critically important and should be more important as time goes on as opposed to, to less important. I agree. It's hard for, you know, for the larger media stations to pick up the stories and, and the areas outside of the media areas of the cities, um, but yes, when they are just as they're mo the most important to us, but also it doesn't uh, give a, a open message about what's happening here. So you know, I've heard constituents say, "Well, all the jobs are in Fredericton and St. John." Well, that's the media that they're listening to, mm -hmm. and that is not the case. On any given day in New Brunswick, there's 3,000 job vacancies. Mm -hmm. We have vacancies here, you know, in our riding, and there's real issues as well regarding succession planning for businesses. Uh, there's opportunities there to try to make those connections, but it's through local programming that those messages come out. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I fully support anything that's local, whether it's locally grown, locally operated, 
uh, locally filmed and, uh, and put forward. That is how we also stay connected as a community and it's, it's too easy in rural areas to become disconnected. And I think the media and the whole communication aspect plays a critical role in that. If that's been, if I could say my greatest challenge uh, pre-election and after the election is, is the communication piece. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, you've got lots of messages out there. Some days I don't think it's ever enough because the, the variety is so vast and there are issues regarding you know trade agreements that may not be of interest to the average person here they don't think it's of interest it's a tremendous significance to all Canadians on trade agreements but if you're someone living in Appahawk or up near Sussex the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement or the European Trade Agreement is absolutely you know foremost in their minds because it impacts you know, there's their sale of cheese and dairy and yeah. imports and exports. So, well, it is. I th I think that uh, having a platform where local stories can be told and local news events, because what goes on in any rural community is just as important to the to the people that live there as what goes on in a city to the people that live there. And having the opportunity to express that and to become aware of the problem mm -hmm. allows the, uh, the members of the community to become part of the solution to the problems. Yes. And that, I think, is, is so important. And, and I think that you have been so instrumental in helping us to expose the problems and come to some solutions by working together. I'll give you uh, some examples on on issues and solutions, but they are local. They are local, local, local. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be science. New Brunswick Southwest is the marine science is a marine science cluster. We mm -hmm. are a hub down here, and you know there's been a lot of talk recently about uh, scientific investment uh, from the federal government. You know in the multi millions of dollars, and that it's going to not the average scientist. We live in communities here that, uh, whether it's the Biological Station, the Huntsman, the Atlantic Salmon Federation, Eastern Charlotte Waterways, uh, the, the actual fishermen's associations themselves, <laughs> they're all doing research. And we are helping to put money into all of those. Uh, they're not big news stories because they're not 30, 40 million dollars. But we have local scientists that are being funded for their research. and. Um, it's significant, not only nationally, it's significantly locally that we have, for example, Eastern Charlotte Waterways. Last week we talked, to, I, I went back to meet with them because they've received their funding and asked them how significant the research dollars were to them. And it's, it's research for the Gulf of Maine all the way up, so it's, uh, there's actually a whole program there. And, and Eastern Charlotte Waterways has a piece of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's measuring and testing on the pH levels and the alkalinity levels in the Gulf of Maine, well, that has a direct impact or could have a direct impact on our, all of our fisheries. Yes. And, but that is local. And then when I spoke with Donald Kilhorn about it and the significance of it, he said he was so pleased because he also received a student uh, funded through Canada Summer Jobs that had, would not have worked with him had he not had the funding, is directly linked with science, and it's a local student that now can say that he contributed to the scientific research in his bay that will contribute to the future and the policy development, which will be based on evidence, uh, in the fishery sector. Mm -hmm. So. so there's a lot, there's a sort of a trickle-down effect that can, that, that, that happens uh, with all of these things. And you know, it's interesting what you say, because we, we don't have a lot of time left, but the, the thing was is that, you know, it's the big ticket items that make the news. Yes. Well, it, there the are so ones. many little ticket items that have huge impact on the daily lives of local communities. And that is one of the things that I think you've been so helpful in. And one of the jobs that we as a, pla as a media platform have is to inform people mm -hmm. of the smaller things that have huge impact. And, uh, and if you're from a larger center, I'm just gonna step mm -hmm. in there, but if you're from a larger center, what would a $3,000 investment in a ball field mean? 
not even an announceable. It's like, oh my gosh, that was so huge to, the, to that particular community. That's right. Uh, to have a ball field for their for their children, mm -hmm. and even you know when you look at the linkages of ages, mm -hmm. older people going back as well, playing in a in a women's league or a men's league or a mixed league, mm -hmm. uh, to have that in their community, those are big big announcements, yeah. and to some people that's a lot larger than significant than a much larger announcement and I that's the, some of the parts that I really have focused on mm -hmm. in terms of the announcements would be I would often say no I, I would like to do an announcement on that or I'll just go up myself and talk with the group and you know like throw the ball or do something yeah. with them because that also feeds back in the encouragement that we are listening that we do know what's important and that's what's keeping our people in their communities yeah I mean so often people will talk about why people left New Brunswick Southwest, but they don't talk about why people stayed. That's right, or why people come back. That's right. Yeah. And we have t-shirts now that say, hashtag I heart New Brunswick Southwest lifestyle. I heard that over and over and over at the doors, and we still knock on doors as, as a team, and we still hear that. Yeah. I don't want many changes, I want a little bit of this. I, and I would say, well, why do you stay? And they say, I stay for the lifestyle. Yes, well, that's why I moved here. Um, Karen, thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show today. This is really uh, it's, oh, it's a pleasure. It's been thank great. you. Yeah, it really it's important. It's important to uh, to us as a community to hear um, how involved you are in everything that you're doing and exactly how you go about doing it. And I think it's I think it's something that we can all resonate with. So thank you for coming on the show and thank you for watching the show today. And I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Fundy Tidings. Thank you very much, Jay. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.